All right. Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. My name is Jason Levine, and it is lovely to see you here back on the Friday Masterclass on Adobe Live, where today we're going to be um, working on user submissions, and I'm going to be processing your voiceovers. That's right. Earlier this week, I reached out to the community on Twitter and uh, suggested that you send me some raw voiceover files so that I can kind of go through and show you what I might do to, uh, to, your, to your recordings. And this is the first in a series of many. Actually got this idea from my good friend Terry White, whom you may have seen earlier this morning, uh, who is doing a really awesome masterclass on kind of Lightroom Classic versus Lightroom CC and which one is for you. Well, a couple weeks ago, he started this series where he was doing sort of photo retouches based on user submissions. So um, I thought that was a wonderful concept. And uh, thank you, Terry, for the suggestion. So I thought we would do that today. So we've got three different voiceover artists that we'll be working on. And uh, again, we're going to kind of evaluate the recordings, take a look. I'll, I'm going to give you a lot of different ideas and techniques and tips kind of along the way. There's always lots of different ways to process things. And of course, when you're talking voiceover, you know, first and foremost, largely it just depends where is it going? What type of thing is it for? Is it a commercial? Is it a trailer? Is it a podcast? What is it? So there's different concepts and different ways that you might process all of those things. But in any case, I'm going to try and cover as much of that as we can. And uh, if you've got questions, of course, I am following the chats. If you want to be in my line of sight view for the chat, I'm following the chat directly at behance.net slash Adobe Live. But if you're also watching on my YouTube channel, Jason Levine Video, I'll be peeking back over there as well. I can see some of you there. So uh, thank you very much. And as always, of course, you've got a wonderfully international audience watching today. So Elizabeth Mock, how's it going? Rob Zilla, how are you? Mallory, it's great to see you again. Cal and Wade, Steve, Festus Kossaboom, always lovely to see you. Lindsay Palmer, Umicorn, great to see you. And then we've got uh, Major Mal One, Danish Naim, David Lewis. Ah, yes, David Lewis will be working on your file later today. Uh, left Edit, hello from London, UK. How it's going? ST Photoworks from Malaysia. Great to see you. FM Boy, DPK on. All right, sweet. And Desiree, hey, hey. Okay, so uh, one last thing too. You know, I told you I'm, I'm still kind of re... I'm redesigning the studio slightly. So if you notice the lighting today is a little bit different. What do you, what do you think? I don't know... Maybe it's too bright. Maybe it's a little too, a little too. I don't know. <laughs> it's different, right? I used to have a more subtle blue backlit halo. Now it's not subtle. It's kind of nice. I don't know. I've got to redo a bunch of my soundproofing this weekend. Uh, uh, most of it was permanently mounted. Some of it was semi-permanent. And for whatever reason, in the last week, maybe I don't. I, there's no explanation. Things just started falling off the walls. So I've got. <laughs> Be doing a lot of caulking and things this weekend. It's gonna be it's gonna be real fun. So much for not doing anything. In any case, let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna dive right in. We're gonna move over to audition here, and uh, let's get working with our first file since everything looks like it is rolling along nicely. Okay. All right. I'm also gonna grab my headphones. While I would normally do this, of course, on speakers, um, I can't really hear. I, I, you'll get you'll get echo uh, feedback if I have to pump up my monitors the way I would normally mix uh, voices or vocals in here. So uh, I'm just going to do it in headphones, so we can kind of listen directly. All right. So our first file, let me plug myself in here. Uh, our first file comes to us from Twitter user Sleepy Eve. Now I want to point out too that all of these uh, all the stuff that I received here, again, these are voiceover artists sent me these files on Twitter. This is uh, uh, Evelyn's site. Uh, and again, at Sleepy Eve here. And this is a whole series of different kind of raw spots that she was doing. And the first thing that I'll do, so when I get a file like this is that I kind of look and I notice, okay, well, it, it, it looks good. It looks healthy. It's a healthy file. Um, we've got some dynamic differences here. You can see these little sections here. Not that they're necessarily quieter, but they don't have as much uh, intermittent peak changes. You know, here we've got, again, kind of consistency in the overall peak and loudness. This one seems to be the hottest. But the very first thing that I do before I even play back, I've talked about this on stream a lot, and this is a great practice for anybody, especially if you're working with voiceover, is run amplitude statistics. Okay, this is going to tell you 
all the statistics, all the data, all the nerdy details about your audio before you even get started, all right? Now, to the naked eye, while this may appear that this is kind of, yeah, it's sort of, it's perfect and there's nothing wrong and everything's great because everything looks fairly healthy and in balance. And we can see at the, up at the top here that the peak amplitude is showing up at zero, okay? Um, but then we can see that there's actually some clip samples. Now, 12 clipped samples, uh, and I'm, I'm guessing these aren't probably consistent, although they may all live right here. We can actually, we can probably even find out exactly where they, those live. Yeah, and they are. So you notice I click on the, this is like our little drop a pin finder. And sure enough, you know, it went right to that, <laughs> right to that transient attack right there. So 12 clip samples is not, is not that big of a deal. However, before you begin doing anything, you should, you should solve that problem, okay? And there's two ways that you can do it. So again, if it's just a simple, a single uh, series of samples based on like a transient attack, let's take a listen to what this actually sounds like. Thanks. Okay, thanks. Wow, lovely. Wow, lovely. Okay, there's even a little bit of crunchiness, a little slight bit of distortion in there. When you're in audition, you're working in 32-bit float. Now, I'm not gonna get into a whole detailed explanation about that because we wanna process voiceover and that isn't super 100% relevant necessarily. I mean, it is in terms of dynamic range, but the really short answer is you're always processing in 32-bit float. So a really easy way just to kind of fix that problem is to take this on clip volume tool or on clip gain tool. That's really more volume. And just attenuate this ever so slightly. All right, so let's go down by like a dB and a half. Now, if we scan again and scan the entire file again, and I'm assuming all of those clip samples were in that one and they were in fact, now you can see there's no clip samples. Now we've adjusted our overall peak amplitude. We're about 0.09 decibels below zero and everything's healthy. And if we listen to this. Wow, lovely. Wow, lovely. It's better. Now it has a little, there's a little bit of crunch in there. Maybe we could fix this with a little bit of declipper. I'm gonna scan it and see what it says. Let's try and repair it. All right, take a listen here. Wow, lovely. Wow, lovely. Oh, interesting. So yeah, so take a listen here. Here's the before. Wow, lovely. Wow, 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 wow. Now if you're listening in headphones, there's a little like it's more almost clicky than it is clippy uh, because theoretically we're not clipped, but in fact, because we had clipped samples, the waveform was actually slightly compromised digitally. So when you run the declipper, it just takes that edge off, all right? So let's redo the declipper. You see that it's going to attenuate everything, but now when you listen. Wow, lovely, wow, wow. Wow. That little clickiness is just, it's just a little less harsh. And you can see that it found approximately, you know, four, four samples across this entire file, right in this location here. Now it's gonna process the whole thing, uh, but that's okay. Took a little bit of the edge off, all right? So now this is looking good. And a, a good starting point when I, before I begin processing, I typically like to bring a voiceover to around anywhere from like minus three for its peak to minus six. So again, if I rescan this now, we're at around minus four. So this is right where I wanna be. This is not an absolute rule. I just like to know that there's a little bit of headroom because ultimately, regardless of the type of voiceover that you're working on, um, you're going to add, most likely, unless they tell you not to, if you're not doing the processing, someone else will, they're going to add some kind of compression. So if you've got everything kind of peaking at, you know, minus one, minus 0.5, you're just, you're just not leaving enough headroom uh, in the event that, you know, maybe you EQ something significantly and now you're above zero. And of course, in 32-bit float, you can always attenuate down. So even if I raised all of this 20 dB and everything was completely clipping, I could, after doing that, bring it right back down and restore it, it's going to be fine. That's the benefit of 32-bit float. Now, if you're in a straight 16-bit, Audition doesn't work natively in 16, in other words, it doesn't, it always processes in 32. But if you were working in 16-bit, you tried to go 20 decibels up and then back down, you, you'd actually have baked in distortion at that point. There's no saving it. So 32-bit gives you a little bit of that flexibility there. Um, okay, so now let's go ahead and kind of quickly listen to some of this and uh, kind of get the feel for what this is. All right, here we go. Female adult, Nicole. Lovely, nice. Fabulous, looks fantastic. 
Wow, already? Incredible service! Finally. I hope it isn't too cold. Did you forget my order? Okay. So these are really wonderful, right? I love, I love, and I love hearing like the character in people's voices. I really, you know, I really tune in to all these little subtle things. So this is wonderful. I can also see that Evelyn has joined us in the chat. Thank you for joining us, Evelyn. Thank you again for lending us your sample for today. Okay. So overall, this sounds great. And I see Evelyn also uh, listed the microphone she's using, a Razor Siren. Not familiar with that one. Um, but I'm hearing a little bit of, there, there's something in the low end that I, that is, that's registering for me that I don't love. So we're going to go into our spectral frequency display, which we've talked about many times on stream here. Okay. Now, when you're in the spectral frequency display, for those of you new to this, again, we're looking at frequency over time. So we have our frequency along our vertical axis here, and you can see all the way from zero hertz to whatever, this is a 44.1 file. So based on the Nyquist limit, our top sample here is going to be 22,000 22050 hertz, 22,050 hertz, okay? And then the color that you see represents amplitude. So first of all, the first thing I see is that this was recorded in, a, in obviously in a very clean environment. Um, there's, no, there's no ambient noise. And how do I know that? Well, because again, color is amplitude. So where you see it closer to sort of yellowish orange, that's the greatest amount of amplitude. Right, And then as it fades into red and sort of a darker purple and then a deep purple and then into black, we're going into silence, right? And naturally you're going to see more black in the upper registers because, you know, the human voice, there's just not a lot, there's just not a lot of frequency content going out of us, you know, above 16 or 18 K, right? Outside of certain, certain sounds. Um, so when I look at the background, the in-between space, it's very clean. Now this could also be a noise gate. I don't know how this is set up, but it looks fairly clean. I, it even, maybe there's even like a little bit of attenuation here. So this could be um, a native noise gate of some kind. It could be some kind of noise suppression on the input. If it's a USB style mic, many of them have that DSP built in, but it doesn't matter. It sounds good, it sounds clean. What I see, however, that I heard that's a little troubling is down at the bottom here. Okay, and I'm gonna zoom in from about zero to 2K, all right? So this area that you see down here, all right, and you can see it's fairly persistent. Now, as we zoom down further, all right, remember, we're looking at really the amplitude and the degree of that amplitude, right at, right at around 60, maybe even as high as 70 hertz, there's just this, there's just this persistent bar of something, all right? Now, as I look at this waveform, what you can see now, this could be also, again, based on the microphone. If the microphone had what's known as a bass roll-off, which in this case, it may have, but it wasn't utilized because it's picking up zero to, to 60 or zero to 80 hertz. Um, there's, there's just some kind of low frequency noise going on here. It's not like hum. Hum would be represented as a solid horizontal line. It's probably just the mic picking up some of the lower bass frequencies and a bit of subsonics. And if that mic is a dynamic mic and uh, you're speaking fairly close on it, then we're getting what's called proximity effect, where it's going to accentuate some of those bass frequencies a little bit. So as I look at this, I'm like, well, I don't think there's a lot of her actual voice down there. In fact, I really know there isn't. And I can also see visually, and I'll, I'll draw a line here with my marquee tool, that really kind of the, the base, the base fundamental of this voice really begins somewhere at around 100 hertz. And you can, you can see that pretty clearly just by looking at, again, those orange sections, right, of the dialogue. Notice here in the middle between like 60 and 120, it's, it's like a different shade, right? It's more purple because there's really nothing there. Really, the fundamental of her voice starts right about here, right at around, let's say, 110 hertz. So what that means to me is that I can probably just get rid of this stuff. I don't need any of that. Now, it's not super loud. If I just go ahead and play back just that selection right here, okay? Now, this is coming in at around, say, it's peaking at around minus 43. So it's averaging around, say, minus 48, minus 45-ish, give or take, again, as she's speaking. I hope For me, though, you don't really need any of that. Now, here's the thing. 
If you're not going to be processing at all, you could deliver this as is, and with low frequency noise at minus 48 dB, you're, you're not going to hear it. You're really not. But the second you start EQing, particularly if you're going to be EQing the low end, the second you start denoising, the second you start compressing, well, unless you're using band-limited compression, you're also going to be compressing this low frequency information. And I can see, I can tell you, there's nothing down there that we need. How do we verify that? Now, I told you, this is going to get super nerdy. I'm going to go ahead and copy this whole thing over to a new file. All right. So here, here's what that looks like. And again, amplitude alone, this isn't super loud. Let's go ahead and amplify that. All right. I'm going to amplify this about 30 decibels. So this is what, if you felt like, ah, just leave it. We, we could just leave it there. It's not bothersome. This is what ultimately we'd be keeping. Take a listen. And let's go to our frequency analysis here. It's like, is that the persistent heartbeat? No, it's, it's like low frequency pulsing, right? Because the microphone and the, the table or whatever is picking up some resonance, but there's nothing there that we need. We don't need it. We just don't need it. So there's a couple ways that you can, you can attack that, all right? In this case, let's go back to our spectral frequency display here. And really, the easiest way, you can just hit delete and take it out. It's that simple. And now all of that is just gone. All right. Now, did we lose any of the low frequency warmth of the voice itself? No. Again, even look here. You can see there's, there's no fundamental that really starts below that. And we still have a bit of presence in the 40 and 60 range. But really, the bottom baseline fundamental is around 120 here. So we haven't destroyed warmth. We haven't done anything. It's going to sound awesome. So now, when we play this back. Female adult, Nicole. Lovely. Nice. Fabulous. Looks fantastic. Wow, already? And I, I want to scrub through this here a little bit to make another point. Again, getting super audio nerdy on you here. But when you look at this frequency spectrum here, uh, excuse me, frequency analysis here, you can see that there's still a healthy amount of low end. What we've effectively killed are the subsonics. And a lot of your, a lot of your microphones out there today, I'm, I'm sorry to say, they actually have pretty impressive um, frequency response ratings, particularly on the low end. You'll usually see a, a figure of like 20, 20 hertz to 20K. 20 hertz is subsonic. You can't really hear it, but you can feel it. That's, I've got a sub down here, and you know, if you leave, it, leave 20 hertz going for about five minutes, you know, it can make a lot of people vomit, <laughs> myself included. Um, so we have enough healthy 180. It's still, there's still a bit there, but we don't have any of that subsonic rumble. And now we don't have to worry about what happens if we start processing that rumble, all right? So that's just a little thing that I will typically do. Not everybody does that. Um, if you ever run into an instance where you've processed your voice, you're listening, you're like, ah, I, I just don't know. Go to the spectral view, take a look, take a listen, and try and be really precise about what you're cutting out here, all right? Now, Again, when we talk about delivery of a voice with something like this, oh, I'm just going to look over at our chats real well. Augustus Clark, thank you very much. Julian Miller, my hair looks amazing today. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Knight Rider, Chris Simier, Dalek, hello. All right. Uh, okay. Joey, what's up? Okay. <laughs> Rob Zilla, pro tip, we don't need it. That's correct. Now, remember, just on that, Rob, you know, if I were doing this voiceover, I've got a super low voice. And when I'm doing radio voice, now again, this is kind of like excitable. In fact, it's, it's great because um, Evelyn Seitlitz she's like happy or like neutral. If I were doing something like this, there's just inherently going to be more low end. My fundamental is, is, is lower. So I wouldn't do a sweep to slice everything necessarily. However, um, if it's subsonic boom, you don't want any of that. Right? If you're in a movie theater and you know when you feel the chair shake, you shouldn't feel the chair shake from someone someone talking. 
you know, unless it's some really bizarre voiceover. I mean, that's very uncommon. Not even Darth Vader's voice has subsonic rumble. No, no, no. you know. I mean, you, you could make a case for why you might do that. That's not what's typically done, right? That's <laughs> explosions, <laughs> you know, uh, volcanoes erupting. That's subsonic. There's no, there's no subsonic in here. Barry White, you know, one of the greatest, greatest uh, 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 bass voices ever. There wasn't a lot of subsonic in there. It was just low frequency, all right? So again, you, you can play around with it and you have to be mindful of it, but you should be aware of what's there in case you need to get rid of it. Now, I mentioned before that I don't hear any ambient noise. El adult, Nicole. Lovely, nice. But there is a little bit of room tone, and it becomes a little more obvious, again, when you kind of listen in between the spoken sections. Now, you're really going to have to raise your headphones to hear that. I'm not going to bother trying to let, make you hear that stuff. But this is one of those things where now we can start to tweak this ever so slightly. Now, I'm going to do this in the effects rack so that we can stack this in a live, real-time chain. Typically for a voiceover, sometimes I do it in the chain, sometimes I just destructively process as I go and then save versions or save copies. If you do everything in the effects rack, you don't have to do that. So first step here is going to be just a little bit of denoiser, all right? This, I love this denoise effect. Used sparingly, it is very effective, all right? And it's very effective for just removing just a little touch of some of that room tony, maybe low end kind of noise. And in this particular, um, instance of it, you can see that I'm telling it to focus on lower frequencies. I could probably do broadband, but I don't want it to touch the high end. I don't want it to touch the mids. So let's see how this does. So I'm going to, I'm just going to see, I'm going to drag, uh, let's see what this sounds like at around 18%. All right. I'm going to loop this little section right here for myself. Again, you might not hear this as well, but I'll process it momentarily and let you see what it's doing. Okay, so at 50, we're like completely dry. Did you forget my order? What's the holdup? Why is it taking so long? Where is my food? <laughs> World class. All right, so I'm actually going to go, because there's a little bit more mid-range noise in there, I'm going to go focus on all frequencies. Now, again, just to kind of show you visually what's going to happen here. Here's before. It's a little hard to see some of that gradient purple. I'm zooming in all the way so you can see it there. All right, let's just go ahead and process this. All right. And now you can see there's just that much less. There's very little of that gradient purple. Now this, this was like a, a key click right here. All right, this is also something we could probably just take out if we wanted to. I'm going to show you another way to do that in a second. But now we've just removed a little bit of that room tone. Now, room tone is nice, right? We always think about room tone when we're doing dialogue replacement. Maybe you don't necessarily need it when you're doing voiceover, right? You want it really kind of clean and dry. So we used very a very subtle amount, around 20%. And now when we play this back... Female adult, Nicole. Lovely. Nice. Fabulous. Looks fantastic. Okay. So this is great. So the last step for this one, because I want to move on, I've been about 24 minutes here. Um, I like the EQ of this. Now, again, I've talked about this ad infinitum on stream. You know, the microphone, <laughs> I can't not use this. The wand chooses the wizard, Harry. The microphone chooses the voiceover artist, all right? Not every mic sounds great on everybody. And the same mic that sounds great on me might sound horrible on you or two versions of the same mic. One might not sound good on my voice. It's just the way it is. You really have to find one that complements the better qualities of your voice. If you've got a super sort of thin, you know, not full bodied kind of voice, that's not an insult. Not everybody has that kind of voice then you probably don't want a very sensitive condenser, something like a Blue Yeti, because that's just going to really over accentuate the high end and the high mids, and it's going to sound thin and a little brittle, uh, just the way it is. Um, you might find a variation that sounds okay based on distancing, based on the treatment in your room. It can sound okay. But 
as a general rule, you might want a dynamic mic, which is just automatically gonna kind of warm things up, make them a little bit warmer, a little bit bigger. And then you can use effects like compression and things to thicken them ever so slightly, all right? People always ask, well, how do you get like a really big sound if your voice is sort of thin? I mean, you can't, you can't resynthesize. I mean, you can, but it's not gonna sound very natural. Some of it just has to be in you. And that's why we have voiceover artists with all different types of characters in their voices because everybody sounds a little bit different, all right? So, but for this, I think the EQ is great. I wonder when my order will arrive. Now, again, if I were doing like a movie trailer or something else, maybe I would really accentuate and make it just a bit brighter and a bit crunchier and really poof, kind of punchy in the face with it. But I like that, you know, this feels like radio commercial to me, um, even TV commercial. I don't, I don't need it to be in my face. I just need it to be present and clean. And I really like the EQ. But the one thing I do want to work on a bit is compression. So let's go over to, um, oh, so here, let me, uh, we're going to do it all, all at once in real time. So I'll keep the denoiser on there. And I'm going to use a native compressor, uh, the, the, basically the one that I really uh, think is pretty decent. All right, tube modeled compressor here. All right, Mallory is asking, is the voice recorded in Adobe Audition 2? I've never used this program. Uh, you'd have to ask. Evelyn, I'm assuming it is, but I don't know. So Evelyn, maybe you can answer that for us. All right, if, uh, if it is. Bruce Gonzalez, what kind of mic am I using? So the mic that's on this uh, particular stream is a Sennheiser MKH416, all right, which is a very standard shotgun mic. All right, Shadman from Bangladesh, how are you? All right, okay. Very good. Okay, so again, for something like this, now because we have some fairly significant dynamics changes, if I were processing this for a commercial, obviously this isn't all meant to be in one spot, right? I would very, very likely, you know, process this section by itself, process this section by itself, process this section by itself, because these are obviously different reads of different content. They're not, this is just a, a, a string out of different samples, right? So I'm not going to process everything the same way. So let, let's take a section, though, that's consistent and of the same theme, like this one here. Female adult, positive. Thanks. Thanks a million. OK. And we just want to control some of these dynamics, right? We can see that uh, kind of if I'm just looking at just straight peaks, average here is somewhere around minus 15-ish. But we've got quite a few that are going minus 12, minus 10, minus 9. You've got this one peak here, which is like minus 5. Again, there's nothing wrong with dynamics. Dynamics are wonderful. But for voiceover, for commercial, for radio, for streaming, you want things a little more consistent because you're sacrificing some overall loudness by allowing those. I mean, you've got a, you have a six to seven decibel change in peak. That's twice the amplitude. Granted, it's just a momentary transient, but it really throws everything else off. So for this, uh, I'm going to use a really fairly subtle amount of compression here. Like maybe, maybe, maybe uh, let's do like two, two and a half to one. All right. And that means that for every two and a half dB above the threshold that I set, it's one dB at the output. Now for attack, again, this is, it's not fast speech, but these are short little clips. So I really want the compressor to kind of kick in right away. So I'm going to set this at around, let's do like a 0.3 millisecond attack. And then uh, for the release, again, fairly quick release for this. Not super, super fast, but let's maybe bring this down to around 150. It's probably going to land between 150 and 225. I've got about four decibels of makeup gain on here. Let's start this at zero. I'm going to play this back and uh, let's adjust our threshold and see where we come up. Female adult, positive. Thanks. Thanks a million. Looks delicious. Wonderful. Amazing service. Wow, that was fast. It's here. I may have to cancel my order. Does it normally take this long? Check, please. May I have the check, please? Nice place. That was a great meal. OK. All right. So now, again, if I were to just process this one section here, and remember that with your gain reduction meter, we've got to see, we've got to see these lights. We've got to see at least that third light blinking. 
that's telling us that we've exceeded uh, we've exceeded the threshold. So at again, 2.5 or three to one, it's one decibel at the output. If we don't see three bars on that gain reduction meter, we're not compressing. It means you gotta drop the threshold even more, all right? So if I were to apply this right now, what you can see is that it just evens those peaks out a bit more nicely. Again, that one is still a little bit hotter. That's okay, that can be a little bit more dynamic, all right? But it's not that drastic change between all of the various, um, all the various spots right there. And again, if we were to go to something like a zero millisecond attack, let's make this a little bit longer and apply that. All right, we can squeeze it down anymore. But now this gives us the ability to kind of raise everything more globally, right? And give it really just a bit more presence and a bit more punch. Female adult, positive. Thanks. Thanks a million. Looks delicious. Wonderful. Amazing service. Wow, that was fast. Okay. Now, again, by compressing and reamplifying, now you're hearing a little bit more of that room tone. So maybe we would have wanted to remove a bit more in advance. Again, I'm going a little more subtle here, but you get the idea. But right away, you can see now that this looks very much more consistent than it did originally, right? So this is ultimately how you want your voiceover to be, consistent. Now, for things like, uh, again, dialogue in a film, they'll typically give that some breathing room. Right. This is why you tend to have to listen in for dialogue and then the sound effects and sound design comes in and it blows you out of your chair. More and more they're compressing everything so that it's very, very even. But if you really want to preserve dynamics, this is what it looks like, right? And then you look at a section like this right here. I mean, these this looks great. I probably wouldn't even add any real compression to this. Maybe just a little bit of limiting to even out some of the peaks, right? And you can also do that. Let's say that I wanted to cap this at minus six. We went into something like amplitude and compression, hard limiter. Let's do a minus six dB ceiling, okay? No input boost. Let's leave the look ahead, which is your attack time at seven milliseconds. That should be fine. Release time default at 100, okay, right? And it's just gonna cap off so that nothing goes above minus six, right? And you can see those two little peaks right there. It's not gonna adversely change the amplitude. We didn't add any boost. So it's just gonna be a little bit more present, okay? Now, the last thing that I want to show you here with regard to this file, let's take this, uh, we can leave the compressor in there, um, is the noise gate, all right? So actually here, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna process, let me go ahead and do this. I'm gonna process all of this. And then let's, let's grab our noise gate, all right? Now, this is if you want to add complete silence between your spoken passages. Because remember, there's still room tone in between each of those spoken passages. Lovely, nice, fabulous, looks fantastic. All right, and you can see that, again, if we zoom in here, by the way, Evelyn's file's getting all the explanation. The rest of these, I'm just gonna start to kind of fly through. There's still room tone in here, right? There's still some of that room noise in between sections. Well, what if you don't want any of that? What if you want it just totally silent? Well, that's where the auto gate comes in. And you can find that in the dynamics effect in Audition. Now, this also has a compressor. It also has an expander and a limiter. I don't like the sound of these compressor limiters as much, which is why I didn't use it. You could, in fact, use the same settings here, and it'll sound kind of the same. I don't love this compressor as much, although for voice, it's okay. I just I like our tube model one a little bit better, but really they, they function and sound very similar. But the gate is invaluable. So here, again, I want a fairly quick attack, fairly fast release, and I want some hold. Now, the release is gonna determine how quickly that gate closes. So if we want it like totally silent in between passages, we bring this release down to nearly zero. If we want a little bit more of that room tone so that it's a little bit more natural, we could do something like 200 milliseconds. So let's take a quick listen here. I'm gonna set the threshold and see how it's sounding. We'll process it and then we'll, I'll show you some differences, okay? Female adult, Nicole. Lovely, nice, fabulous, looks fantastic. Wow, already? Incredible service. Finally, but isn't too cold. Did you forget my order? What's the holdup? Why is it taking so long? Okay, so I'm adjusting the threshold to make sure that with the attack time, which is super fast, that I'm not, not only am I not cutting off her starting consonants, but if there's some thanks, like I don't want it to be thanks, 
<laughs> I really want to hear those S's. So I want to make sure that it's kicking in fast enough and that the release time is preserving that. So if I apply this as it is, you can actually see that, first of all, in between the sections now, it is completely black, meaning that there is no sound, right? So that's perfect. There's no room tone. And if we investigate, zoom in, you can actually see a little, a little trail off at the end right there, right? The release time, that's a 200 millisecond trail before it <laughs> closes the gate, closes the window. Now, Evelyn had actually sent me uh, a, a, a processed version of some of this work uh, let's see, where is it? It's this one here. And if you take a look here, notice there is, there is no decay. It's a very sharp closure, okay? Now that, that's a personal preference. I don't usually typically like so, so much closure because oftentimes you can end up with little artifacts, little clickies in there, which by the way, Evelyn, there's a couple of those little clickies in there. To prevent that, you elongate the release time and make sure you have some hold. But let's mimic that same technique because there are times where you want it just totally silent. I'm going to repeat my last command. Let's give it a release of say like 50. We might even have to go slower. I mean faster, but let's see if that does it. All right. Yeah. And now you can see there, there's virtually no, no fall off, no, uh, no decay whatsoever. Right. And if we do it even more aggressively, let's just go down to like 50, which is the lowest it goes. All right. Yeah. Female adult, Nicole. Lovely. Nice. Fabulous. Looks fantastic. Wow, already? Incredible service. All right. And actually, it works for this style. It works, right? It really, it actually works. You don't even need that little bit of decay. Maybe it's a little more aesthetically pleasing. Maybe if it's just the voice by itself that you were listening to, there's probably gonna be music here, it would be nicer. But if you've got stuff underneath it, keep it super clean. You can do that with the gate, all right? Pretty cool? Yes. Okay. Nice, interesting. Okay. Mallory, when we get a voiceover done, whose job is it to correct the sound? It's done by the voiceover artist. Well, that's the thing, you know. Uh, I wouldn't say I would say no. It, it just depends, right? Depends who the client is. Uh, I've done stuff where because I'm an engineer, I'm like, I'll process it. It's my voice. I know how I want it to sound, and I do that. Uh, and if they don't like it, then I'll send them a raw one and say, please don't call me again. Um, most of the time, I would imagine if you're doing a VO project, someone's like, okay, you know. Here's, here's the copy, read it, just send us the raw file, we'll do what we need to do with it. And that's, that's, I would say, probably nine times out of 10 the case. Okay, thank you very much, Evelyn. That was awesome. Moving on. All right, so our next file comes to us from Twitter user at David Presenter, site mastersproduction1.podbean.com. And uh, let's take a listen to this. Hello and welcome to this week's Straight Ahead, brought to you as ever, along with London's leading music venue, the 606 Club of Chelsea. I'm David Lewis and I'm with you for two hours of great music. So the show is a little different this week, insofar as for the first time in six months I don't have a guest with me in the studio. Instead, we are going to focus on this year's EFG London Jazz Festival. It all starts next Friday, Friday the 13th of November, and runs through until Sunday the 22nd. We've got gigs down at the club, and what we're going to do during this show is listen to the artists coming up in the festival. Awesome. Okay. And I see Evelyn just chimed in with the exact same, exact same. So it's good that we're consistent. Yeah. I mean, most of the time it's, it's, it's going to be somebody else, you know, and it just depends on the client, right? They're going to, they're going to tell you what they want and what, what they will or won't want you to do. One thing that she points out too, for things like plosives or little, again, momentary sibilant uh, clipping sections or something, I would totally fix those because you wouldn't want to send them something bad. And that's something which like they, if it's not there, they're not going to know that you removed it. Now, noise reduction, if you don't know what you're doing, it's real easy to muck up your files. So don't attempt that if you're not kind of a little more seasoned or schooled in doing it. But plosive removal, sibilance removal, yeah, that, that kind of stuff you can probably get away with. And again, basic normalization or attenuation, not a bad idea. All right, now again, this one here, very different sound. Again, we're gonna scan this. We can already see no clip samples, very healthy looking. Peak amplitude, minus four and a half, right where we were before. Our measured bit depth captured at 24-bit, lovely. Um, very consistent here. 
Again, I don't know how David's capturing this. Could be with a live compressor. It doesn't feel, it feels compressed, but not, not overly so. It feels very broadcasty, as it should, right? So for this, um, again, two fundamental things that I might do, all right? And this definitely has a good, a good help, uh, a good helping of room tone. Now I've got my headphones way up. So I don't know if you're all hearing that, but there's definitely some healthy room tone in there. So once again, I'm gonna come into my denoise. And again, assuming I'm doing the final processing on this, I'm gonna take that out. We don't, we don't need, we, there, I don't need that room tone. So, uh, and I can also see as I look here, it's kind of primarily focused in sort of below 1K. So I don't know if this, I don't know if this one's gonna do it. We may have to use the broadband uh, the broadband one as well, or maybe even the smile, which is low and high. Let's take, actually take a listen to that. Hello and welcome to this week's Straight Ahead, brought to you as ever, along with London's leading music venue, the 606 Club. Hello and welcome. To All right. Hello and welcome. Hello and welcome. All right, now let's turn it on. Hello and welcome to this week's Straight Ahead, brought to you as ever. Hello and welcome to this week's Straight Ahead, brought Okay, and one more time with the smile. Hello and welcome to this week's Straight Ahead, brought to you as ever, along with London's leading music venue, the 606 Club of Chelsea. I'm David Lewis and I'm with you for two hours. Hello and welcome to this week's Straight Ahead, brought to you as ever, along with London's leading music venue. Hello. Hello. Yeah, I might, I might even go a little bit more, and I'm not sure which curve I'm liking better here. Hello and welcome to this week's Straight Ahead, brought to you Hello and welcome to this week's Straight Ahead Board. All right, this one. We're going to go with that. We're going to go about 36%. Okay. So, again, this one, for me, doesn't need compression. Uh, little subtle de-rooming, denoising. The only thing, for me, now, again, this is a stylistic choice. This is, David has a great voice here. And um, I like that there's actually a little bit of, a, a, of an upper mid-range bump. In fact, it, it, when I heard it, I immediately went, ah, this... Now, this is obviously in the UK. The Beatles, uh, Rubber Soul, 1965, has this very particular EQ bump at around 4,500 hertz, which kind of brightens the upper mids. And I'm hearing that in here, which I like. But for my ear, I would probably attenuate it ever so slightly. That's just my personal preference, my personal choice. It sounds wonderful. It may be coming across as slightly sibilant to some, um, or just maybe just a little, a little bright, right? And some of those uh, uh, transient consonant sounds. So to do that, uh, we're going to use a little bit of parametric EQ, all right? So let's go into the parametric equalizer here. Actually, we're gonna add it to the rack, okay? And uh, first we just kind of need to identify what it is that we're trying to, uh, trying to really, uh, improve upon or, 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 or just subtly, subtly uh, finesse. So let's listen to this section right here. And what we're gonna do during this show is listen to the artist coming up in the festival. So our first act on the festival is Amani. She's gonna be on stage along with Lex Cameron. So rather fittingly, our first track. Okay, so this is a good section because there's a lot of S's in it. So what I'm gonna do here is we're gonna start by, um, let's enable band number four. I've got this in full reset mode, by the way. So everything is turned off. I'm gonna start at around um, 4,500 hertz, okay? And I'm going to use a Q value of around 12. That means a very super narrow band, right? Because I just want to attenuate just a little of that S. Now you could say, why not use a de -esser? I almost never use de -essers. I always find them to be a little too aggressive. And frankly, I have an, an, an analog uh, EQ that I used to use. Um, as a sidechain EQ to attenuate, along with the sidechain compressor, to like attenuate really harsh sibilance, and it sounded very natural. There are some digital ones that do it fairly decently. Our native de -esser, for my money, is very aggressive, so I think it would destroy kind of the, the, the beautiful characteristics of this voice, so I don't want to use that. But a little subtle EQ with a very narrow band will probably be just, just what we need. So I'm gonna loop this, play it back now. I'm gonna have to sweep through and find exactly kind of that center frequency that I'm hearing and then pull it down ever so slightly. So here we go. 
So our first act on the festival is Amani. She's going to be on stage along with Lex Cameron. So rather fittingly, our first her fire and sniff for thy was snormatic. Lex Cameron. So rather fittingly, our first her fire and sniff for thy was snormatic. And while she's on stage along with Lex Cameron, so rather fittingly, our first track. So our first act on the festival is Amani. She's going to be on stage along with Lex Cameron. So rather fittingly, our fire and sniff for thy was snormatic. So I was snormatic. So I was snormatic. So I was snormatic. Okay. So it's right about 5,600, all right? It could even be 45, it could even be 63. 56 is actually kind of one of the base fundamentals of sibilance. It's not that it's sibilant, it's just that for me, there's, there's, a, there's an, ex it's accentuated. So I would, I would probably recommend bringing that down. That's my personal preference. So I'm going to attenuate that. Let's bring it down to around minus six and a half. Let's take a listen. So our first without act on the festival is Amani. She's going to be on stage along with Lex Cameron. So rather fittingly, our first track. And so our first act on the festival is Amani. She's going to be on stage along with Lex Cameron. So rather fittingly, our first track. So our first act on the festival is Amani. She's going to be on stage along with Lex Cameron. So rather fittingly, our first track. Okay. It's subtle, right? It's a very narrow band. It just took a little bit of that edge off. Now, again, that's my personal preference. Now, again, where this is going, maybe you want a little bit more of that accentuated. If there's other music going on here, I could see why this actually could benefit really nicely, okay? If there's like a bed underneath this. But for standalone, I'm just gonna soften that edge just a little bit. Now, for some, this may be a little bright. Again, if you wanna take off some of the shimmer, we could even do something, actually, I probably use one of these um, shelving filters here and dial in around 12K, and we could pull a little bit of this down. So our first act on the festival is Amani. She's gonna be on stage along with Lex Cameron. So rather fittingly, our first so track. Before. So our first act on the festival is Amani. She's gonna be on stage along with Lex Cameron. So rather fittingly, our first track. Okay, just kind of warms it up a little. I don't, I don't think it needs that, so I wouldn't touch 12K. And frankly, the rest of it is really nice. Now, if I wanted to do anything, again, I typically will always kind of a, B against the um, frequency analysis as well. Oh, sorry, and I still have David's uh, lower third up there. All right, let's get that out of there. Um, as I'm looking at the frequency analysis here, I mean, I might even give it a little sort of in the 150-ish range. You can see there's a dip, right? There's a dip, at, we haven't touched 200 hertz, but there's a so noticeable. So our first act on the festival is Amani. She's gonna be on stage along with Lex. There's a little bit of a dip over here occasionally. So again, I might give it a little bit of around say 110, 120, if I just wanted to warm things up a little bit more, all right? Maybe a cue of around four. Cameron's so rather fittingly our first track. So our first act on the festival is Amani. She's gonna be on stage along with Lex Cameron. So rather fittingly our first track. Okay, give it just a little bit more low end warmth. Um, this is a very, very nicely done voiceover. So subtle change here. And again, at this point, if we apply this, denoise, Oh, sorry, we did it just to the selection here. Let's do it to the whole file. We go ahead and apply this to everything, all right? Go back into our spectral frequency now. Okay, let's go to the beginning. And let's show the before. So again, if you're taking a look here, you're I'm watching the stream, you can see that there's just decidedly more gradient of reddish purple here because of that room tone after. It's not totally black, but it's just attenuated, it's a little more subtle. So now when it starts. Hello and welcome to this week's Straight Ahead, brought to you as ever, along with London's leading music venue, the 606 Club of Chelsea. I'm David Lewis and I'm with you for two hours of great music. All right, wonderful. Now, one last thing, I wouldn't personally do this, but some might say, well, I'm still hearing there's, there's a bit of kind of room reflection. So it's not so much the room tone, like the noise of the room, but there is a bit of reflectiveness wherever this was captured. So we do also have, it's called de-reverb. I, I don't love that term because really it should, it should be de, de ambience de-reflection. But if you want to pull out a little subtle amount of that room reflection, you can use this. Now that this is, it's kind of aggressive. And once you go beyond a certain range, you start to incur some artifacting, but it can actually kind of de-room a voiceover. So let's just take a listen here kind of in the default and see what it does. So the show is a little different this week, insofar as for the first time in six months, I don't have a guest with me in the studio. Instead, we are going to focus on this year's EFG London Jazz Festival. It all starts next Friday, Friday the 13th of November, and runs through until Sunday the 22nd. We've got gigs down at the club, and what we're going to do during this show is listen to the artists coming up in the festival. So our first act on the festival is Amani. She's going to be on stage along. 
39 percent it's it's pretty subtle all right you got to be you got to be headphones super loud just a little but again you saw when i went to like 50 suddenly it sounds it sounds very processed and artificial so you got to be you got to be careful with d reverb but great that we could uh check that one out okay nice Evelyn, I'm glad you said something about the DS or I tried using it and found it to be really heavy handed like a guillotine. Yeah, absolutely. It's 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 not it's not great. And it's not that I, honestly, there are very few DSers that I think work really well. There's a couple of waves, uh, third party ones that are recreations of analog gear that do a really good job. Ours are so so really, if you've got really bad DSing that you can't re-record, just know this. Between 5.6 and 6.3K are kind of the standard fundamentals. Use a, fi a super narrow band, 8, 10, 12, even a 16, a Q value of 16. Boost it up, wait until you hear those s that are slicing your eardrums, and then pull them out, all right? And as long as you're super narrow, and it's again momentary, you know, sibilance is, 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 is passing by, you know? Um, your brain won't interpret that momentary lapse of high frequency. And if anything, it'll just gloss it. It's like it's masked over. So I, I will do that a thousand times over using um, a software de-esser. All right, and for our last sample. So thank you so much, uh, David Lewis, for that. That was wonderful. It was really great. David is saying, yes, it's a radio show, so there is often a bed underneath it. Oh, very nice. And it's run through an analog desk with a mic compressor running at about minus three. There you go. See, a man, a man can hear these things. So it was really wonderfully done. Uh, and firing pins saying, yeah, I don't like using DSers. I mean, don't get me wrong. DSers can be great. And like I said, my analog solution nails it every time. I seldom wire that in. There's some software ones that are good, but usually, and especially with mics today, you could probably tackle most of it with just a little bit of narrow band EQ. Okay, for our last one, we have a file by Amy Ferrati. At Ames1217, uh, her site, amyfvoice.com. Friend of mine, Amy Ferrati, does some really awesome work. And uh, let's take a listen to this. And we're going to run our amplitude statistics. And you can see that we are very healthy here. We've got nice, plenty of amplitude. Again, this is like a raw read of lots of different spots. Now, this one, this file is 16-bit. So this is actually great. I didn't notice this earlier. So again, if we're going to be processing this, a lot of your USB mics record at, they, they only do 16-bit resolution. They don't do 24. So before you begin processing, it is absolutely essential that you convert the sample type, not interpret, convert. You're going to convert it. You can keep the sample rate, whatever it is. So it's at 44. I won't change that. Mono, I won't change that. But I do want to change it to 32-bit float, OK? If you process at 16-bit, you will have diminishing returns, especially if you're doing noise reduction, compression, and EQ, all right? You will destroy your sound before it even starts to sound good. It'll sound good in preview, but after you process and fit, you're going to be like, mm, something's not quite right. You must convert to 32-bit, to okay? Do not process on a 16-bit file. Always work in 32-bit. It's just a good way to be, okay? So let's take a listen. At GE Healthcare. We've always known what our people are made of. But recently, we've been put to the test. And we've been called to meet a challenge that's like nothing any of us have ever seen. We've been called to be resilient, to be selfless, to be brave, and to be our very best. Okay. I love this. All right. This one, this was... <laughs> You're like feeling this one in your heart, right? It's like emotional, emotional story, emotional voice over here. So it sounds wonderful. Sounds like a, uh, a nice full-bodied dynamic mic being used here. You can hear all that nice warmth. And again, when I look at this and listen, I'm hearing a little bit of something in the low end that is just, just not, I just don't love. And you can see that there's just some, there's some instances where there's just some low end stuff going on here that we probably don't need. Now, again, as we look at kind of those low end fundamentals, I drew my little line right here and zoom in. Yeah, it's the same. We're looking at just just below about 100 hertz. So all this other stuff, it's just a lot of that low end kind of subsonic stuff that we don't really need. So something else that you can do in lieu of um, in lieu of deleting that in this case, we can go a little bit more subtle 
or again, a little bit more um, less aggressive, well, I guess it's still pretty aggressive because it's an FFT filter, using the FFT filter. Now there's a preset in here, which I've shown before that I made years ago called Kill the Mic Rumble. Because I can see that, and that I think has a cutoff starting at around 100 hertz, I'm going to extend this to around 120, all right, with the drop off here at 80. So I'm basically preserving everything above 80, which really there's not much. I could probably even squeeze that in a bit. Go ahead and apply this, all right? It does the same thing as deleting it. And again, now when I listen. At GE Healthcare, we've always known what our people are made of. But recently, we've been put to the test. And we've been called to meet a challenge that's like nothing any of us have ever seen. It's still warm, it's still full, uh, it's still emotional, it still has warmth. We just got rid of the subsonic rumble that we don't need, all right? Now, I've only got a minute here, so I gotta show you one last thing. Again, maybe I wanna just kinda pump up a little of those upper mids. I'm gonna go to a third party EQ that I have here where I already dialed this in at 5K giving it about a 1.2 dB boost, and then just a little bit of shimmer at 12.5K. Again, the mid-range and low end is wonderful. So let's just play this back. We've been called to be resilient, to be selfless, to be brave, and to be our very best. And to be our very best. All right, go ahead and apply that. It just adds a little bit more clarity, a little bit more brightness. And then as I look at this again, you know, I would add some subtle compression on here, but I would keep it fairly subtle. I wouldn't go aggressive and just keep things real nice. So unfortunately, my friends, that is all the time we have. Uh, we've got the Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge coming up next, so stick around for that. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye-bye.